let's talk about your choice, man. Uncharted three. You've been flying through the Uncharted franchise at a breakneck speed. Tell me about your I would experience. Agree with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like uh, as listeners know, I started out with Uncharted four. Uh, I completed that, loved it. Then went to Lost Legacy naturally. And then uh, I went back to three, which was kind of an interesting order to play these games. Um, for folks that don't know, I did play one and two many moons ago, played a little bit of three, never finished it, and then, you know, the rest. So <clears throat> I went back to three because it felt right to complete the only game in the series that I had never beat. Hmm. So I'm glad I did. Um, it's funny, I, in preparation for my review, just while taking notes and stuff, I looked up a review online and the title was like uncharted three is an amazing game and one of the most frustrating games out of the series huh. and i was like i gotta read this because there's some truth to that sentence and uh i made a note of um a term called dude raider because <laughs> i was like wow that really does sum up uncharted mm. because apparently in that review when the the first game came out it received a lot of criticism and some people or one person coined it dude Raider <laughs> because they were seeing it as like, Oh, this is just Tomb Raider, but it's a dude. Right. You know, and, you know, what's the difference back then? I guess no one really knew how <clears throat> endearing Nathan Drake was going to be. Um, so yeah, ultimately just to kind of jump right in uncharted three Drake's deception. Uh, it was released in 2011 for the PlayStation three. And then later on, in the Nathan Drake collection. So that was uh, done by Blue Point Games and uh, they cleaned it up pretty nicely. I think it runs at 60 FPS and um, might be 1080p as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but it, it's a clean package and they did that with all three. So that's the version I played. Um, as far as the sort of uh, premise of the game, uh, you're partnered up with your childhood mentor, Sully or Victor Sullivan, who I've mentioned before. He's in pretty much every game, I think, except for Lost Legacy. And um, basically, you're in search of this legendary lost city known as the Irem of the Pillars. Um, once again, you're kind of competing with a gang of mercenaries led by another villain. So it's the same kind of premise as what you see, expect in these games. Her name is Catherine Marlowe. And interestingly enough, she's Sully's former employer. Um, so there's a relationship there that, mm. that Nate has to sort of digest and understand. Well, hang, hang on a second. Like, you used to work for her? Like this crazy witch? There was even a scene where uh, she takes out an umbrella and Nate says some cocky, cheeky remark like, oh, don't burn a witch or something like that, <laughs> which was really funny. Um, lots of quips in the Uncharted game. So for folks that haven't played, I think you're going to enjoy the mm. sort of dark humor. Um, initial thoughts. Uh, it's a solid game. Um, I think that this time it's a little bit more of a, I suppose, a humbling experience because coming from Uncharted 4 and then Lost Legacy and then going back to 3, whether it's the Nathan Drake collection or not, um, it was hard for me because I, I wasn't left as awestruck as I was um, left when I played 4 and Lost Legacy. I mean, those games are just absolutely AAA, perfect diamond cut games. So mm. when you go to 3, it's a, it's a solid experience, but don't forget this is a 2011 game that, that got a touch up. Mm -hmm. So... For me, I really felt that perhaps more than someone that were to go from one through four, you're going to see that nice inclination of quality. But to go backwards, it's, uh, you know, it's like anything else. You play, I don't know, just say like a later Silent Hill game and then you go back, or excuse me, you go back and play one, it's going to be a little bit painful. Um, mm. It's like that with anything, you know, go back and play an N64 game. It's going to be a, not exactly a, a, a sight for sore eyes. So, right. Um, ultimately I just felt like it aged a bit, a little bit more than I was expecting. And I, I didn't really digest that. I thought there was going to be a, a point in the game where I was like, man, I'll get past this. It's just an initial phase of coming off of a, a you know, a perfect looking game. And for some reason it, it just didn't really click. Uh, mm. I think that it's ultimately is still a really good looking game, but visuals are important for me and to go, you know, from four to, to three like that, it's quite a big jump. Hmm. Um, but outside of that, it's, uh, it still holds up very well. Um, some of the sort of polished climbing mechanics that are present in four and lost Leg legacy obviously aren't here with three. Um, you kind of feel the lack of finesse with, um, the way that Nate moves around, but it's still, still functional. It's mm -hmm. just like when you jump from say A to B, you're going to feel a little bit of clunkiness there because they just weren't as refined as they were with the, with the later games. 
and that's completely fine. Mm. Um, Story-wise, didn't really love it. I found it to be fairly unforget or excuse me unforgettable. Uh, really, just because it was more of the same, and I, I guess I was potentially hoping for something different. And that sort of premise works, you know, villain, <clears throat> gang of mercenaries. You're trying to find something, and they're trying to find the same thing as you, and you're kind of you know competing against them. Um, but I don't know. I, I think it's ultimately the, the the fact that I had played them out of order just kind of threw me for a loop. Yeah, I, um, I, I kind of wanted to dive into that a little bit because I feel like had you perhaps played these in the order that they were released, these obvious faults might not have been obvious at all. 110%. I, I think that it... it almost goes without saying however i sort of would argue that because sometimes you can go back and you have a really good experience but i think the way that these games pan out from visuals to story it really is such a a large inclination in quality from one through four like mm. there really is big strides between the the titles and there are other franchises where there aren't like for mass Effect one through three granted i've never played them there are visual upgrades but well I, mean, I don't know. I, I there's also me if I'm wrong, but they're not huge strides. Well, from from two to three, no, uh, there there isn't a huge stride. But the the gameplay from one to two is completely overhauled. They're not even close. Um, okay. So they they took the gameplay from the first game and changed it completely into the second game, and then you know with that came a graphic overhaul as well too because the game moved from being like this third person um over the shoulder kind of uh I'm trying to think of what it what it could be really compared to you know it was it was like this third person just action game with like heavy rpg elements and in two and three it moved into more of a gears of war style cover shooter with rpg elements mm. and i think there's a lot of people that kind of go back and forth with the mass effect games as to whether or not the play style of one is better than the play style of two and three i personally think two and three are better games um there are things with one that are just insufferable <laughs> in my opinion um of course you know when the remastered collection comes out later this year i'll probably have an updated view on that depending on how overhauled it is which from what i hear isn't really going to be a huge overhaul uh gameplay wise for the first game it's still going to be essentially the same thing mm. so yeah well that's that's a series i gotta dive into at some point and that's <laughs> probably my, my place to start <laughs> block well i mean you have to start with the first game with those. If, if you're going to yeah. play them all, you have to start with the first one um, for multiple reasons. And we can get into that in another show, but uh, sure. No, but, that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's more, um, it's more than just story. Like there are layers to that. Cause you got to keep in mind with that franchise too. decisions that you make in game one, absolutely play out in the third game. Um, and nobody's playthrough is exactly the same. Like the dialogue trees in those games are massive and impactful. Um, there are people that I've spoken to that have characters that died in their playthroughs that lived through mine and vice versa, you know? So that's amazing. It's, it really is. <laughs> I don't know how the hell they did it, but, but they did. That's amazing. So anyway, um, I'm sorry, back to uncharted. No, no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, you know, just to kind of wrap up initial thoughts, I mean, it's a, it's a really good game. Um, the voice acting characters and gameplay were all great, uh, but I just felt like something was missing. And I, again, I, I can't stress the fact uh, without sounding like a broken record that, you know, when you're coming from such amazing titles and you're going to something that's like really good, but not astonishingly good, um, it has that sort of effect. And I think perhaps this is why you hear more about Uncharted 2, 4, and Lost Legacy more than you hear about 1 and 3. Um, because when I talk to people about Uncharted, they're always like, oh, my God, two was amazing. And four and Lost Legacy, like it always just ends up being those three. And I can see why. Um, I, it's been a while since I played one and two, but uh, two had a tremendous story. And I just remember that game a lot more. So mm. um, ultimately, you know, if I were to give it like a, a sort of solid review from the jump, it would be a really good game. It's just not it's not a great game. Um, and it's just because you're you're comparing it to the other ones. Right. But moving into gameplay, um, 
same kind of thing here. Nathan, once again, has a variety of animation sets. He can run, walk, jump, climb, swing, uh, punch, swim, shimmy, and scale. Uh, you're still dealing with a lot of those crazy climbing mechanics that are totally unrealistic, but <laughs> that's Nathan 